Welcome to another one of our jam sessions. I hope you've had a good week at school this week and that nobody's got any sniffles or colds and that you're enjoying life and still getting a chance to see some of your friends at school and to play some games with them. Today I've got another little story to tell you. This is a story called The Friendly Giant. So let's just sit back and listen to our story. There was once a giant who lived on the top of a hill. And at the bottom of the hill was a village. All the people in the village were scared of the giant on the top of the hill. He was huge and frightening, just as giants are. Every morning, the villagers could hear him stamping about his enormous house. His feet were so large that the ground trembled every time that he walked. And every night the windows of the houses in the village rattled with the giant's loud snoring. One day, the blacksmith from the village went up to the forest near the top of the hill to collect some firewood. Suddenly, he could feel the ground trembling beneath his feet. The blacksmith dropped his pile of wood and looked around in panic. There in the distance, he could see the tall trees crashing to the floor. And as he looked, stamping his way towards him and pushing the trees away as if they were as light as grass, came the enormous giant. Oh no, he won't. It's the giant! As the blacksmith nervously watched, he saw the giant pick up huge branches as if they were twigs. Soon the giant had collected an enormous pile of wood. The blacksmith stood and stared. Oh no, he wailed. The giant is collecting wood. That means he's going to make a fire. And that means he's going to cook something. And that means we'd better look out because surely the giant is going to come down to the village, snatch some of us away and eat us for his tea. Because that's what giants do. The blacksmith hid behind a tree and waited for the giant to stomp his way back home. As soon as the giant was gone, the blacksmith ran down to the village and told his wife all about what he had seen. When his wife heard the story, she looked terrified. That's terrible. We'll all have to hide. And they did, under the bed, and pulled a blanket over their heads just in case. Now, it so happened that the baker had gone out walking with his dog. His dog ran off up the hill towards the giant's castle. The baker ran after his dog and when he got near the castle, being rather nosy, he peered in through one of the large windows. There he saw the giant carrying a huge saucepan towards a large fire which was burning brightly in the enormous hearth. Oh no, moaned the baker, it's terrible. The giant has got a huge pan and a huge fire and that means he's going to cook something. And that means we'd better look out because surely the giant is going to come down to the village, snatch some of us away and eat us for his tea. Because that's what giants do. And with that, the baker ran down the hill with his dog falling close behind and went and told his wife all that he had seen. That's terrible, said the baker's wife. We'll have to hide. And they did, in the cupboard under the stairs. Though they did light a small candle because they were both afraid of the dark. Now the tailor, returning from market, took a shortcut which took him by the giant's castle. 
and being slightly rosy, he peered in through a huge window, and there he saw the giant holding an enormous knife, bigger than a soldier's sword. It glinted and flashed in the firelight as the giant carefully cut up some large vegetables. It's awful, wailed the tailor. The giant is cutting up vegetables. That means he's going to cook something. And that means we better look out. Because surely the giant is going to come down to the village, snatch some of us away and eat us for his tea. Because that's what giants do. The tailor turned and ran down the hill and told his wife all that he had seen. That's terrible, wailed the tailor's wife. We'll have to hide. And so they did, in the baby's room, behind the cot, and the tailor put a potty on his head just to be sure. Meanwhile, everyone in the village had heard about the giant's fire. The giant's saucepan and knife and how he was going to do some cooking. And how he was coming down to the village to snatch someone away ready to eat them. Because that's what giants did. There was nothing else to do but hide. The villagers locked their doors. They bolted their doors. They put chairs and tables and cupboards in front of their doors and then they hid. Some in the cellar, some in the attic, some in cupboards, in drawers, under seats, behind curtains and even in the bath. They hid and they waited. Suddenly, they felt the earth begin to tremor. And they heard the windows rattle. The giant was coming down the hill towards the village. He took huge strides and with each step the ground shook like a mini earthquake. He's coming! He's coming! shouted the villagers. The tailor cautiously lifted the potty on his head and peered out of his window. He saw the giant striding down the street carrying his huge saucepan. He's coming to get us. He's coming to get us. He's going to put us in a saucepan. And the tailor promptly put the potty back on his head. Suddenly, there was a loud knock on the door. And then another. So heavy, the door seemed as if it might break. What do you want? stammered the tailor. I have come, roared the voice of the giant. Yes, said the tailor, I have come. If you'd like a drop of soup. Pardon? I said I've come to see if you'd like a drop of soup. You see, I've collected some wood and made a fire and got a saucepan out and cut up some vegetables and made some vegetable soup. And I just wondered if any of you villagers wanted some. I've got plenty, you see. Oh, I see, said the tailor very relieved. Well, that is kind of you. That's okay, said the giant. You know, the funny thing is that there doesn't seem to be anybody around. Almost as if they were hiding. Well, laughed the tailor at his way. That's because we've been a bit silly, you see. It's just that we thought, yes, said the giant. Well, it's, it's just we thought, <laughs> oh, never mind, Let, let's have some of that soup. And from that day on, the villagers and the giant got on very well. And the giant often made a big saucepan of vegetable soup to share. Because that's what this giant just happened to do. Wow, giants are usually so big and scary in stories, aren't they? But here was a giant who was friendly. He wasn't going to kill the villagers and eat them. He was making a pot of soup for them. You see, in the Bible, God says, 
Man looks at the outward appearance, but I look at the heart. And you know, we need to make sure that we don't judge people just on the way that they look, but instead take time to find out about them so we can really get to know them properly. I hope you might do that for someone this week. Thanks for listening. And in a moment, we'll see if you can find Maximus Mouse. Well, today we're in the hall and we're looking at the Boys Brigade board with all the fantastic pictures of some of the things they've been up to in the last wee while, partly during lockdown and afterwards. Let's go in and see if we can see some of these pictures closer. Oh, here's our boys playing some games. Oh, and this was the night they had all the drums. That was a fantastic night, they told me. They were beating the drums and, oh, what are they doing here? Somebody's doing their splits. I wonder if that was at the Halloween party. Oh, and here they are volunteering at the food bank and collecting all the shopping. Yep. Oh, and here they're playing some more games. Yep. Oh, and here's the boys. Can you see them? Yep. And here's the, the younger boys all oh, having a great time. Oh, yeah, and here's a lockdown wall. I don't think there's been all that many things that we've added to it. So, folks, maybe you could help with our lockdown wall and put some more new things on it. Um, don't forget that it's here. This is all the different things I've been doing. Oh yeah, here do you remember some of these houses that were made specially? Uh -huh. I wonder where Maximus is today. <laughs> 